All right, so I'm looking at my phone right now. I'm gonna go read an article. And you can see it says, please pay attention to the road right away. So only when I start looking at the road does that warning pop up again. And let's say I take my wheel and I'm holding it and I'm still looking at the phone, I'm still reading, not really paying attention to what's going on. Again, please pay attention to the road. And if I do it one more time, it's probably actually just gonna uh, give me a strike and kick me off the full self-driving. So if you get enough strikes, you lose access to the FSD beta for a week. So should I take one for the team and uh, demonstrate how this works? Hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead. Sure, why not? For the community that doesn't have a Tesla and wants to see how this works. So I've been repeatedly warned not to go on my phone. I'm still reading the article, ignoring all the warnings. Again, please pay attention to the road. I'm running out of strikes here. Probably have one more chance at most, and then they're gonna kick me out of the software. Okay, making a right turn here. There's a cab, okay, here's a great place to maybe go on my phone some more and get kicked off. All right, I'm not paying attention. There's all this stuff going on around me. Oh, there you go. Auto steer unavailable for the rest of this drive. Hold steering wheel to drive manually. Okay. So now I got a strike. So I'm gonna put the car in park. Telemetry from your vehicle indicates improper use of FSD beta. Keep your hands on the wheel and remain attentive at all times. FSD beta will no longer operate if autopilot disables four additional times. So, you know, pretty lenient with five tries, but I think it's an effective deterrent, right? People don't wait for the strike. They stop using their phone immediately, um, just in anticipation of the fact that they could get a strike. So, the camera-based driver monitoring system is getting pretty good. It's hard to really sneak anything past it in terms of phone use these days. Now, is it 100% perfect? No. It can be improved a lot. Um, for example, they're adding drowsy detection. That's going to be a really important thing to detect when users are drowsy and handle that appropriately and uh, to detect when there's a medical emergency, um, to detect all kinds of different scenarios. But right now, people aren't really trying to do anything too crazy. People are, for the most part, wanting to use it correctly, wanting to use it safely. They understand they have to pay attention and they have to be in the driver's seat and be ready to take over at any time. They just may be you know, get distracted, someone sends them a text message or something, or um, something happens and they go, oh, okay, I gotta look at this Slack message or look at this order we got or whatever. And they just kinda need to be generally, gently reminded, hey, put your phone away and let's focus on the driving, that's it. That's really the, the top use case that needs to be handled and they're doing a great job of handling that. The driver monitoring system has actually evolved a lot since I originally got the car. Uh, there was no driver monitoring system originally. Now it's good. But just like the self-driving software itself, it can improve and get better and better over time. You don't want to be too overzealous and annoy the user because then you're going to negate any safety benefit you have from the system if people are just getting so annoyed to use it. You just basically need to make sure they're paying attention, that they're not using their phone, that they're not staring at the car screen. It detects that too and will beep at you if you're staring at the car screen too much. And um, that's really it. So, you know, I know uh, 
Dan O'Dowd made this video, a really pretty funny video. Um, of course, you know, I think he should really be charged with reckless driving. It's kind of like that guy, Lavish P, who used to do that sort of thing where he would get out of the car and just have it with the lane keeping assist on and they arrested him, remember that? The guy who drove across the Bay Bridge? Obviously, by the same standard, uh, Dan O'Dowd broke the law too, and his PR firm did. And uh, they should face the penalties. I mean, hopefully they did it in a closed course where nobody's affected. But at the end of the day, there's, you know, you're not going to be able to stop somebody from doing crazy, something crazy. Somebody could go and get in a car with cruise control and turn cruise control on and then jump out of the driver's seat. Um, you know, at, at least FSD beta is better in that it's more advanced about handling more road situations. But, you know, you can't really stop people from doing something crazy. You can put protections in to help people do the right thing. And that's really what, you know, they're focused on is just the, the normal use cases, right? So anyway, that's just a brief overview of how Tesla's driver monitoring system works. I think it's a great driver monitoring system. Not enough people appreciate the fact that when people are using FSD beta, they can't use their phone. So they're actually focused on the road, unlike people who are driving manually. Watch people who are driving manually around you in traffic. They're all looking at their phones. But when you're using FSD, if you want to have that convenience of having the car handle the driving or the software handle the driving, you need to actually pay attention to the road. So I think this is super underrated in terms of uh, just the safety improvement. And I think it's going to get better and better. It's going to be able to detect uh, drowsiness. We know we're working on that. I think medical conditions, more and more things they'll be able to detect um, and respond appropriately, which is a huge, huge safety boost for every car out there. And eventually, you know, I think within the next 12 to 24 months, we could be looking at them just turning off the driver monitoring entirely because the software is so good that it's not necessary anymore. So that's the truth about Tesla's driver monitoring system. Don't trust people who work for the competition, who are spending millions and millions of dollars to smear this technology that saves lives. It's pretty sad um, that they care more about making money than engaging in an honest debate about this technology and what it is and what it isn't. But, you know, it is kind of funny. So we'll give them that. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend.